An arrest has been made after a Palestinian-American man was stabbed, leaving a protest in Austin, Texas this week. Activists are calling for hate crime charges against the man accused of stabbing 23-year-old Zachariah Dorr. The suspect, identified as Burt James Baker, screamed the N-word at Dorr and his group, pulled Dorr from the car and stabbed him in the chest. Baker also attempted to rip down the Palestinian flags on the vehicle. Muslim advocacy group CARE point posted on X decrying the stabbing, writing, quote, from the murder of six-year-old Wadia outside Chicago to the shooting of three college students in Burlington, Vermont, far too many violent attacks like this have occurred over the past four months. Those responsible for this violence must be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And those fomenting the anti-Palestinian and anti-Muslim hate that leads to this violence must be condemned. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib promptly took to X to condemn the attack, saying a 23-year-old Palestinian American was stabbed last night in Texas, the latest hate crime against Palestinian Americans. The constant dehumanization of Palestinians, Arab and Muslim Americans has real dangerous consequences. The Justice Department must investigate this as a hate crime. Now, the father of the stabbing victim shared this message from his son. He told me, I want to go, I want to give a message. I say, I don't want you to go out there right now, but tell me what you want to say. He said, Mr. President, Mr. Joe Biden, I blame you. I blame you for what happened to me. If you were called for a ceasefire three months ago, this will have never happen. Now, as we alluded to above, above, there is a possible connection between the increased violence toward Palestinians and the media that seems to at least be passively Islamophobic in certain examples. To wit, the Wall Street Journal caught some flack this week for running an op-ed labeling Dearborn, Dearborn, Michigan, a city with a significant Muslim population, as being the jihad capital of America. Uh, so what do, you, what do you make of all of this? It does seem to me very notable that just about a month ago, we had a congressional hearing in which college students were invited up to give testimony about the level of anti-Semitism they were experiencing on campus, where very serious claims were made, including by one college student that said a professor of his called him a, quote, dirty Jew. There has been no follow-up on that allegation, a very serious allegation that if there were any merit to, I would expect resulted in a prompt firing. But even though there was congressional space given to people to make those kinds of allegations, it does seem that there is significantly less attention being played, paid to what are now multiple instances of Palestinian Americans being physically stabbed um, multiple times, attacked at these rallies. There was, of course, the Columbia University student that was attacked with the uh, IDF-developed chemical uh, skunk um, chemical spray. I, I guess, but by what metric do you say there's less attention being paid to it? I mean, these are these are stories that are being covered, arrests are being made. I'm, I'm glad they are. I hope this person gets the maximum penalty for stabbing someone. Um, we're suffering I'll from- I'll give you some examples. Like, so I just alluded to the fact that there was a congressional hearing about anti-Semitism. There have been no congressional hearings about Islamophobia. There have been vigils att well attended by most members of Congress in the wake of October 7th and decrying the uh, rise in anti-Semitism in the United States of America. I have no, rightly so. There have been no similar outpourings of solidarity for the now 27,000 Palestinians that have been killed. There was a very small vigil that was attended by basically the squad members and a couple of others. Uh, that's it. And of course, a story like this, I, 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 this is speculative, obviously, but a Palestinian American having racial slurs shouted at him and a Palestinian flag ripped from his vehicles and being stabbed, I would very easily imagine that if a Jewish American had experienced this kind of violence at the hands of someone for political reasons, because of their support for Israel, or just because of who they were as a human being, this would have been front page news. Not, we are covering this almost a week late precisely because it was not front page news. And frankly, I had to agitate to some degree to get us to even cover the story. So yes, I do think there's an asymmetry here in coverage. So it matters, I, see, it just doesn't matter to me if someone is stabbed for political reasons or because the person is crazy or because it's a domestic dispute or because it's a workplace dispute. Um, I do think it is important to cover the increasing crime, particularly in the city, which we are doing. Um, I, I don't, 
I, I think the person who did it, again, they've, they've arrested him, charge him, lock him away forever, fine by me. It just doesn't make the crime more significant to me because perhaps it was for political reasons. It's interesting. When that little six-year-old boy was killed uh, in the stabbing death shortly after October 7th, and his mother, of course, was stabbed uh, repeatedly and survived, the attacker in that case specifically noted um, the day of jihad uh, narrative that was percolating on conservative media at the time, um, where they were anticipating that these jihadist sleeper cells were going to be emerging over that weekend. And he responded directly to those news reports. Now we have the Wall Street Journal announcing that Dearborn, Michigan, one of the most dense concentrations of Arab Americans in the country, is the jihad capital of the world. And I do wonder if you think that that is responsible reporting to characterize a uh, Muslim American, Arab American population in those kinds of terms. That was an opinion piece from someone writing for the Wall Street Journal. Um, do I agree with that framing? No. But do I think that person should be blamed for um, for murders or crimes against Palestinian people? Of course not. Um, we ha you have freedom of speech. You are allowed to say inflammatory things if you want. People's violent actions are their own responsibility, and they should be absolutely held responsible. So there isn't it any evidence of increased violence, against, frankly, against either Jewish people or Muslim people right now that I have seen. I, I think there is evidence of increased violence. But you no, said— No, this is—you can't just cite one or no, two or three examples. No, it's not me citing one or two or three examples. It's CARE and these other groups that have been doing an analysis of an uptick in hate crimes against these groups. But so you, you discount this analysis no, from pro-Jewish groups you about something that you, and just— no, no I didn't. I said both groups. And you can dispute what it, how those numbers fact, are. I dispute both But I said groups. I, I have, I'm, have no interest in disputing hate Activist crimes against Jewish people. Activist groups always want to make it sound like there are more hate crimes and more violence me, against the groups that they represent you just when said, in truth Robbie. most violence is non-ideological and in fact rising in the city we sit you, in not because you, people you hate said, other people for political reasons you just but because said, our criminal justice system is not doing a good enough job of putting away repeat offenders right. and crazy people. So you just said in that we're talking about a... Um, a man who was just stabbed in the heart. And I would like, I would like to keep yeah. the space to and, and talk about that And they arrested the today. person, and they should lock that person away and throw away the a, key. A man was stabbed in the heart for being a Palestinian in the United States of America. And so you admitted that you would not phrase the title of that op-ed that way. You would not choose to title it that way. Why not? I didn't, I didn't read the op-ed. I didn't know, know what no, it's you, about. No, you said I would not when I read the title and asked if it was, you think, I, I asked, I think I said, if it, is, it, is it appropriate? Some, okay, some I don't think that. people— You seem to I agree think that it wasn't what, how people, you would title the op-ed, and I'm asking why not. Okay, I assume what the op-ed is about is about the level of support for Palestinians and Gaza in Dearborn. I am, I'm from Michigan. I've been to Dearborn before. Um, I don't think people advocating for an end to the violence in Gaza are supporting jihad at all. I've said that multiple times on the show, so I don't know where the evidence uh, is being marshaled for that claim. Maybe the person is claiming there's a, actually pro-Hamas activism happening in Dearborn. I don't know whether that's the case. I know there's plenty of pro-Hamas activism on college campuses, in fact, and I would describe it that way, but I don't know that that's true of Dearborn, and I would not Well, in other way. very substantive um, vigilante justice news, members of the Guardian Angels, quote, roughed up a man that they identified as a migrant. This happened live on Sean Hannity's show. Curtis Lewa, founder of the anti-crime patrol group and former candidate for mayor of New York, was speaking to Sean Hannity from Times Square on Tuesday night when Sean Hannity urged him to pan the camera to what he said off, off camera was um, a group of the Guardian Angels confronting an, a migrant. They pushed him, you can see this on the video, to the sidewalk and were placing him in a headlock. So what told Hannity, in fact, our guys have just taken down one of the migrant guys on the corner of 42nd and 7th, where all of this has taken place. Well, in fact, our guys have just taken down one of the migrant guys right here on the corner, 42nd and 7th, while all can, this Can you is pan taken. the camera? They've taken over. They've taken over. You'd like the camera over there if at all possible. Yep. Oh, you got your key open, guys. He is out of control. Out of control. Now, as it turns out, police have since confirmed that the man who was taken down was, in fact, not a migrant, but a New Yorker from the Bronx. Per the Associated Press, Sliwa said he had believed the man was a migrant because he was speaking Spanish. 
and because other guardian angels had encountered him with other Spanish speakers on previous patrols. Now, Robbie, I would argue that this kind of rhetoric leads to that kind of result. When you are talking about how migrant hordes are pouring over the border and every Spanish-speaking person becomes a target, you are, whatever your intentions are, paving the runway for people, vigilantes like Sliwa, to start attacking, assaulting anybody they believe subjectively to be migrants, simply because in America, apparently, it's illegal to speak in Spanish while you're walking down the street in, in Sliwa's America. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of Curtis Lewa before. This doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, and actually, if you beat up somebody unjustifiably, you should be prosecuted. I actually want to prosecute more people engaging in violence in the streets. Um, illegal immigrants are not, uh, other than breaking the literal crime of coming to the country illegally, are not responsible for some disproportionate share Much of less, in fact. violence or crime. The average um, American. Most of the crimes being committed in our cities are being committed by people who were, in fact, born here. So we're not solving that problem. Yeah, I mean, I think the problem immigrants. is that even if you prosecute someone who, after the fact, committed a violent cr crime, whether you beat up a man because he was speaking Spanish or because you stab a man because he was flying a Palestinian flag, that's, it's not very good comfort to you after the fact when you have a hole in your heart or may not have survived an attack or if you, you have a black eye because you've been beat up by a bunch of vigilantes in the street. So I don't think it's enough to say, well, the crime was prosecuted, so justice was done. I do think there has to be a conversation, especially when you are a large and influential news outlet like Fox News and, and Sean Hannity about whether or not, or, or the Wall Street Journal, whether or not the messaging that you're putting out there has the effect, whether or not you're legally culpable, whether or not the messaging you're putting out there has the effect of generating more violence against discrete groups of people, and whether or not ethically and morally you have a responsibility to be more judicious with your language. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with any of that, but... Again, most violence is not for ideological reasons, and we need more, in some cases, police resources probably, in some cases just other public services, something like that, to get the actual problem of violence under control. But I am obviously against political violence, and I think it would be responsible for everyone to rein in their rhetoric a little bit, or in some cases considerably, so that we have a more civil, public conversation. Yeah. Well, stick around. We'll have more rising for you right after this.